Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Liberty Mail with the Student Fellows of Faith and Freedom. Hello and welcome to a special episode of Liberty Mail. I'm Grace Riley and we are here at the underground studio at Grove City College and today we're going to be bringing you the content and results of our Man on the Street videos that we did at CPAC. We've mentioned uh, that we were doing this in the past two episodes that we filmed at CPAC, but today you're in for a treat. It's a special episode where we'll go through the footage and we'll show you some of the interviews we had, some of the answers that CPAC attendees had, and what they felt was um, most important in our country today and what their message would be to Americans going forward. So the first video that we're going to look at today is going to be a message to Generation Z. I was able and fortunate enough to walk around at CPAC um, on the ground and ask people this question, ask them what they would tell Generation Z. So we'll forward right now to the video and see what people said. My message to our young generation is to be bold. I think sometimes we get uh, really sidetracked because we care about what other people think and so that kind of tends to silence us, but we need to be bold about our beliefs, um, to be passionate and just to speak truth. If you know what's right, you just have to stand firm in that. Stand firm in your beliefs, speak up when you need to, and make sure that your message is getting across to people. So climate. Yeah, I would say don't be ashamed of the gospel. I would say go out there and share your faith. And um, it's okay to not caveat and say, well, it's because of this, I believe this. It's no, just it's the truth and stand firm on that. Do your research. Don't trust everything you see on TikTok, Instagram, that sort of thing. And actually listen and, and do your research, really look into it, not just hear one thing and repeat it. Not ever be afraid to speak up and, uh, you know, I look up to you guys when I'm here. It's amazing. So that's my biggest advice. Thank you so much. So we were able to have some really great conversations and the messages to Generation Z were pretty similar amongst the responses that we got walking around and talking to people. Basically just to know your stuff, understand the why of what you believe and to stand firm in those things and to not be afraid to speak up and talk about the things that are important, uh, especially with everything going on in the political climate today because it is generations Generation Z's duty to speak up because Generation Z is going to be leading our country forward um, in the future. So it is really important that Generation Z, I think, takes this advice and listens to it. But just moving forward, another one of the questions and things that we talked about with CPAC attendees was what they felt the most important issues America was facing were. And obviously, there are a lot of different ways that you can go with this. The goal of this question was to allow for more broad answers to kind of find out what people felt was important. So we'll go ahead and watch that and see what people said. What do you think are some of the most crucial issues facing America today? I think election integrity is the first one because if we don't secure our elections, then we'll never have any honest elections ever. I think one of the most crucial issues is the issue of life because if you don't have the right to life, you don't have the right to liberty, you don't have the right to any other right. So I'm a high schooler, I'm a junior, I go out here in Fairfax County. And the amount of students who don't really know what's going on in our government is crazy. I mean, a lot of them don't understand the process. And when they don't understand the process, they tend to lean toward things like communism. The, the, the lack of attachment to traditional values, and I don't even mean so much the values as the attachment. People f feel as if they're in a free-floating moral universe. They don't even respect the values that their parents respected or their parents. I think uh, the border is another really huge issue um, and since Biden has been in I think there's a lot of uh, liberals and Democrats that have woken up to that. The issue right now is the political polarization that is affecting our generation especially. You no, know, we've got to get the youth involved. If we want to win in 2024 the youth has to be a priority. Yeah, that's great, thank you. So among those, there were a lot of different answers, but I think what stuck out the most to me was just, you know, the differences in answers where some people talked about 
uh, more cultural and more religious things being the, you know, the biggest issues we're facing. And we'll get into later on in this video, we have a video where people talked about why faith was so important. And that was, you know, a central response to this question. But along with faith and tradition and culture being important, there were a lot of um, more political and economic answers as far as election integrity went and the border. And of course, getting Gen Z involved, which again, the message to generate Z covered. Um, so moving forward, Aaron had the opportunity to walk around and ask people what they felt the strengths and weaknesses of the conservative movement were. Aaron focused on this question um, when he was walking around to kind of find out what people felt like we were doing well at CPAC and what people felt like we could be doing better as conservatives to be more successful in the future. That's a great question. I think I'm going to start with the weakness so we can end on a positive note. I think one of the hardest things about the conservative movement is we're often more focused on infighting than we are against uniting against the left. And we should realize that that is our biggest opponent, is the left. Well, one strength is definitely that we do have truth on our side. But one of the weaknesses that I see is we're definitely dropping the ball um, on the youth side. I think one of the biggest weaknesses that I'm starting to see out of the newer grassroots, because I came up grassroots of the Tea Parties, is a lack of comprehension that I can disagree with somebody 10% of the time and maintain a friendship. I think a strength that I see is that we all know the topics that are important to us. Strength, I think we're really doing well at starting to impact the culture more. When you look at someone like the Daily Wire and they're doing Daily Wire Kids, they're doing Harry's or J Jeremy's Razors, um, that's a really great way that we can start pushing back on the culture rather than just leaving that to the left because they have many institutions and culture and politics are so intertwined that I think we have to start fighting in both arenas and I think we're starting to do that well. It's the biggest strength is the level of passion that's coming into it with new ideas and things of that nature but if we're able to implement 10 percent of understanding with that new passion and energy we can have a win-win formula for both sides. Yeah, so Aaron did a really great job walking around and talking to people. So just shout out to Aaron, who couldn't be here today. Um, and also to Jonathan McGee, who is a junior student fellow. He's been on the show before, um, but he did a great job as our cameraman. So he was the camera and tech guy at CPAC, which was really helpful. Um, so, yeah, that was the strengths and the weaknesses. I do think there is a, there is a pattern between people kind of acknowledging that uh, we should be trying to involve the youth more, but also acknowledging that in order for the youth to be involved, um, we need to reach them with conservative ideas. And in some of the last videos, um, what one of the young men said was how his peers in high school didn't really know much about what was going on in the world, couldn't really explain much about history, um, and that a lot of them were falling into more more categories of Marxist ideology. So I think pairing those two responses together is a good idea just in understanding that in order for the youth to be more involved, we need to reach them with conservative ideas and with history, with the truth, and with policy that works and is beneficial for all Americans. So looking at, back at that, we're going to end with a video about why faith is so important in politics. And this is a video, we didn't specifically ask this question, but we got so many answers from people that were, you know, strong on the faith side that referred to why faith is so important and why that's the most important issue that we're facing. And since here at the Institute for Faith and Freedom, um, that is our foundation and what we base everything on. That's the lens we look at politics through. We felt it would be a good idea to just make this its own video um, so that we wouldn't cut too much of what people were saying. So without further ado, let's watch the faith video. I think the eradication of faith from our society is absolutely crippling us. I mean, if you remove our Christian values from the foundation of our nation, then everything begins to crumble. And that's exactly what we're seeing even the, in the conservative movement. You're ha you have all these values, and yes, that they're great, but there's a why. There's a reason that they work, and it's because God established order. He established his design for creation. There's a reason things work well, done a certain way, because that's how God designed them to be. I would say don't be ashamed of the gospel. I would say go out there and share your faith. And um, it's okay to not caveat and say, well, it's because of this, I believe this. It's no, just it's the truth and stand firm on that. As conservatives, as Christians, if we continue to kind of sideline our faith, sideline the why from 
what we do, why we do it, what we believe, who we vote for, then we're going to continue to see this kind of falling away, this absolute madness, this chaos, because Jesus is the answer to every question our society, our culture, our political activists are asking. Um, the majority of the people on the right are Christians, and that's something that we're shying away from as the conservatives, and it's something that we need to look towards. Jesus Christ is the only way um, that we are going to save our country. He's the truth, the way, the light. The gospel has to be the answer, otherwise you have a faulty, fallible answer that's kind of a band-aid to a much bigger problem. Yeah, so these were really great and important answers that really strongly relate to, again, the foundation of everything we're facing in our nation. Um, and just the fact that when you remove God, in a sense, from culture and when people aren't, you know, having God and religion, which is the foundation as the center of where they're, what they're basing their morality and ideologies of, that's where we have a lot of these problems that we're facing today. So this was a really great interview, and those young ladies I know from Young Women for America, and um, they, they just did a great job explaining that and had some really, really great points. Um, so we just wanted to end on that note so that you would hopefully continue to think about that because those were some really great points that I think go well with all, everything that everyone else said about the issues that we're facing um, and just more of a message of hope to Generation Z. Um, so just looking at all of that, we were really happy with the interviews that we got and we had a really great time walking around and talking to attendees and we hope you enjoyed this content. Be sure to come back next week. We'll have another more normal episode for you, um, but we hope that you enjoyed this special edition and the content that we got on the ground at CPAC. For more information on the Institute for Faith and Freedom, visit faithandfreedom.com.